When I was first starting out as a software engineer, I always felt like my coworkers were working way faster than me. Part of it was obviously that they were just way better at coding than me, but another part of it was that they all used specific tools, tools that if I had known would have saved me time and would have allowed me to work more efficiently and more productively. So let's start off with the first tool, which is Alfred. This is probably the tool I wish I knew the most. Alfred is basically an app that appears to be a text-based search tool, kind of like Spotlight Search on a Mac. But what it actually allows you to do is simplify a lot of the repetitive and mundane tasks you do on your computer on a day-to-day -day basis. And each time you use it, it probably saves you a couple of seconds of time. But over time, those seconds really add up. So let's jump into a couple of ways that I used this tool. The first thing I did was use it to launch sites that I would go to all the time. JSON Pretty Prints, WordCounter.net, Regex 101. These are just sites that I visited all the time. And I found it easier to just make an Alfred shortcut and launch them directly from my keyboard, saving a few seconds of time. And you can even take it a step further and use query params and keywords to search sites directly from the Alfred launchpad. And the next feature I use, which is probably the most important feature of Alfred, is the clipboard history. Basically what this is, is a running history of everything you've copied and pasted on your computer in the last seven days. And while it might not seem amazing or useful at first glance, it completely changes your workflow and the way you interact with your computer. Let me just list out a few things that this was a game changer for. Have you ever been programming and you came up to some configuration file where you needed to copy like 10 keys over to another file one by one? So the normal workflow would be to tab from one to the other and then back. But now that is totally unnecessary. Now you just copy each key one by one and then tab over to your other file and paste each one in using the clipboard history. Game changer. Here's another example. Have you ever copy pasted a link from like two days ago or something that you wanted to access again? But now you have to go down the rabbit hole of remembering where you copied it, where it came from and trace your steps back. Well, with the clipboard history, it doesn't even matter. You can just search for the keywords that you remember in your copy pasted link and it will just show up. Honestly, Everyone that I have told about the clipboard history talks about how much time it saves them. And while it's pretty weird to get used to, I think the time saved is completely worth it. So go crazy. Okay, so the next three tips I'm gonna talk about are all around the terminal, which is a pretty common tool for software engineers or web developers to use. Number two, iTerm. So this might seem like a very weird one to put on a list because who doesn't know about iTerm? Well, somehow in my first year of professional development, I did not know about iTerm. I spent all my time as a web developer in the first year using the base Mac terminal app. But what's wrong with the base terminal app is that you can't have multiple windows on a single screen. You need to create tabs and they're cumbersome, they're slow, they're weird to use. But what iTerm does along with a plethora of other things that I'm not gonna get into is allow you to have windows side by side on the same screen so that you can see all your processes running. For myself, I set it up in a four pane structure because that's what works best for my workflow and how many terminals I need as a web developer. And it gives you a whole bunch of extra shortcuts and tools that aren't even built into the base Mac terminal. Things like Command Shift I, which allow you to type into all four terminal windows at once. Basically, as a web developer, as someone who interacts with the terminal all the time, this will be another productivity game changer. Number three. Zoxide. So if you are a web developer or you spend a ton of time in the terminal, you know that annoying feeling of navigating to all these directories you go to all the time. You press CD over and over again, you press LS, you copy and paste the exact path of the place you want to go to. It's pretty annoying and it's hard to create good workflows around this to make it faster. Zoxide is a game changer because it's basically a smarter CD command. What it does is remember the paths you commonly use and then jumps straight to it based on your keywords. If I want to navigate to this directory that I go to all the time called ticketing, normally I would have to press CD multiple times in order to get to that directory. But now, as soon as you've entered that path for the first time, Zoxide knows this path. And all you need to do is press Z and then your keyword, and it jumps straight into that path wherever you are in your directory. Even if this saves only a couple of seconds per command, over the course of days, months, Years, this will save a ton of time. ZSH and oh my ZSH. ZSH is basically the shell that is used in the terminal and it provides a bunch of enhancements over bash. But now 
ZSH is default on Macs, so I won't go into that too much. But the tool I really wanted to talk about was Oh My ZSH. Basically what this is, is it helps you manage your ZSH configuration, which can include plugins and themes. So let's talk about themes. Something that developers love is colors in their terminal windows. And with Oh My ZSH, you can basically search through all different kinds of themes and install them very, very quickly into your terminal until you find something that you like actually like to use and look at. And the other thing is plugins. So plugins are basically just programs you use in your terminal, but Oh My ZSH handles all of them. Personally, I have the Git ZSH plugin, which gives you a bunch of data about Git based on the directory that you're in. Number five, terminal aliases. So this was definitely another productivity hack that would have saved me an immense amount of time. So once upon a time, I saw my senior engineers just routing to all kinds of directories very quickly or, or like launching all these complicated commands really quickly. I was just like, how are they doing this? Basically, the more you program, the more you realize that the things you paste and type into your terminal can get really, really long and complicated. And before my solution would be to take these long commands and paste them to like a notepad somewhere where I would just paste them back and forth whenever I needed them. But what the senior engineers did was create aliases, which basically are like these shortcuts for terminal commands. But basically the idea is instead of writing these long commands, you instead just press the keyword in front. And it's especially useful in a job setting where you might have like development, staging and production environments. Save time with typing, save time with copying and pasting into notes by creating bash aliases. Number six, rectangle. So this is literally just another window manager tool, but it is very valuable for your workflow, mostly because the default Mac window manager tool is absolute garbage. I don't know how it was this bad. But all Rectangle does is allow you to snap windows from one side of your screen to the other to divide your workflows. I've included this because a lot of people talk about better snap tool, but there's no point because Rectangle is free and better snap tool is $3. And I assume we all like free things. Number seven, Loom. So have you ever been in a situation where you needed to explain something to someone over a meeting, but Either you have social anxiety or you don't know if you're gonna mess up explaining it or you don't wanna explain it over and over again when someone else has arrived. Well, this is a tool that I learned actually in my last remote job that allows you to work asynchronously. So this is an example of a Loom recording. You have your video in the corner and you have your code and whatever you're explaining in the main window. And basically when you're done, it creates a link that you can send to your friends or your coworkers or whatever to help explain your concept. Generally, I find the camera part to be unnecessary, but the concept of being able to create a video and easily share the link anywhere you want is actually a huge game-changing productivity hack. It allows people to understand bugs, understand features, understand product requirements much better. It allows people to re-watch videos and not have to like ask after a meeting or something. And it just helps with the extreme difficulty of explaining difficult programming concepts over Slack or text. If you enjoyed this video about me talking about game-changing productivity tools I wish I knew, you might want to check out this video about mistakes that I made in my own job search that I wish I knew about. Thanks for watching.